Hey folks, it's Dragon Keeper 19600. Robots in Disguise has come to a close, but that's no reason for us to stay glum, because heck, we finally reached the good part of Micron Legends. So that's something to celebrate. Um, tonight's episode is episode 31, Past Origins. Part one, it's part one of two. Um, I think it's the only first, like these two episodes are the only episodes that are like officially listed as being like a multi-part episode. Even though, as I said before, the show is serialized from here on out. So, um, I feel like there's nothing I could say about the episode at this point that I haven't already said about it. Um, so I guess we'll just rock out to the opening right now. So, are you guys looking forward to uh, Titan's Return? Like, next Monday, I think? That'll uh, be a thing. I've already gotten people asking me, like, are you are you going to do, um... Actually, people are already asking if I'm going to do reactions on Cyberverse, which doesn't come out till next year, and we don't even know when next year. Um, I have a feeling, though, that it might be coming out maybe earlier than we expect, because the ending of R.I.D. felt kind of rushed to me, and I kind of get the feeling like maybe they're trying to scoot it out of the way quickly so they can bring out Cyberverse. But I'm not sure about that, so it might... We might not get, uh... Cyberverse for like another year. Um, and if I run out of Micron Legend episodes before then, which is a big if, uh, I'll probably think of something else to watch. Um, you guys can suggest that when I ask and don't start suggesting stuff now. Be like, I've already had people like, you should watch DuckTales or you should watch Steven Universe. I'm like, I don't, like maybe, well, we'll see. We'll see what I decide to do. But what's great about doing reactions Transformers is that Hasbro, when they no note the copyright, they just uh, slap a monetization thing on it for themselves, and they don't like pull it and give me a copyright strike because it's like uh, you can't show us show people the cartoon that they might not know about. It's like, wouldn't you want to make a cartoon so that people can see it? Like monetizing it makes sense to me, but not pulling it. Uh, I, I don't. Oh look at <laughs> look at Hot Rod's uh, baby fat cheeks. That doesn't make much sense. Anyway, we're in a flashback. Ah, Wheeljack's Japanese name is Rampage. Wow, his voice is way deeper than it is in English. You can die alone, Rampage. Die alone in a fire. <laughs> no, of course. He's just running off to get help. Uh, get a better paint job before I get back. Bye. Getting hot. Take off all my clothes. Hot Rod. Hot Rod, I see a bright light. It's just the flames, Rampage. You're fine. Okay, the guy standing next to Hot Rod is... The guy blocking him now is Wheelie from G1. There's a lot of weird G1 cameos in Armada. Like in other shows, when a character cameos from G1, it's like a slightly modified version that like fits the art style. So, like, if you see somebody like Huffer and animated, it looks like Huffer, but it still looks like an animated character. In Armada, when they have a cameo, they just show the character looking like they did G1. So, like, that wheelie looks identical to G1 wheelie. It's kind of odd. But yeah, Hot Rod failed to save, <laughs> save a fellow Autobot in a fire. <laughs> and we're only just now hearing about this for the first time because... Eh. This is Stepper. We didn't call for you. Go home, Stepper. Uh, do you know that guy? <laughs> like I said. Uh, don't know, huh? I might have explained this in a previous video, but don't know is basically, um, a title attached to someone's names to designate uh, extreme respect and reverence. Kind of weird to call someone in the same military unit Dono. But whatever. <laughs> Stepper has been given no indication that the Cybertrons know that he's out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
He starts belly dancing outside for attention. So like I said before, Stepper's English name is Sideswipe, and he's voiced by Sam Vincent in English. Um, double D in Ed, Ed and Eddie. I think uh, female fans tend to like this character more than male fans. Sideswipe's toy was notorious for not moving from toy shelves. But uh, every girl who talks about Armada seems to like <laughs> Sideswipe. He's so hapless. Look at him doing a handstand. <laughs> You're seeing this too, right? This is weird. Wait, I remember you now. You're a loser! <laughs> okay, why do we never see Autobots using parachutes in any other show? Some recipe for hilarity. Uh, can't you get a ladder? There's gotta be a better way to get him down than shooting the parachute. I have to take a breath because I'm a robot! <laughs> the first time the Matrix gets dropped in the show. And it's by him going, Oh, by the primes. Shut your mouth! I think what helps make an annoying character endearing, at least to an audience, is if the characters are more annoyed by him than the audience. Like a character like the radio and the brave little toaster, or so Stepper here. He's more endearing because everybody else wants him to shut up. Don't call me Sama, it's embarrassing, ew. Wanting to seek out a guy who helped you out, you make me sick! <laughs> it's funny that they're saying that. Man, he sure is reliable and doesn't seem like he'd work that hard. Anyway, let's play a video game. <laughs> In the base! I like the Nintendo 64 inspired controller with the nonsense control stick in the middle. Like, how big do you think kids' hands are? They have to reach in the middle and like... GameCube controller was way better. Heck, the Wii U controller is better designed than Nintendo 64 controller. <laughs> Ugh, never make that face again, Billy. That was creepy. Oh god. You're not affiliated with me! Uh, did Stepper never... Did no one ever tell him that Silverbolt is an asshole? <laughs> Seems like something someone on Cybertron should have mentioned. I want to go meet up with Silverbolt. That guy? He's an asshole! <laughs> Tisk tisk. <laughs> yada yada. Sakamoto desuka? Well, not so much look after him as ward him away with a stick whenever he tries to come near me. I don't- I hate cute! <laughs> You've been nominated to Senpai. Congratulations. Go away. The fact is, I don't trust Silverbolt to not go postal, so I think Stepper better cling to somebody else. <laughs> How will Hot Rod get out of this one? Uh, I'm not sure what the point of that transition was. What were you, like, two seconds short on the required minimum time for this episode? I'm pretending I'm a duck! Okay. I was shedding liquid pride! That's a totally dignified and not at all embarrassing thing for a guy to say. You are in sad shape, my friend. Uh, 
ホットロッド直属の部下になるあどうと<笑>そうだ誰それ俺だよ俺よく覚えとけ Has he not introduced himself to anyone else in the base? He's just like, Silver Bolt Dono! Sign my butt! <laughs> Can you tell I've been up for a while? No, I haven't. That's a lie. An enlisted soldier, folks. There he is. And? Whoa! I'm sorry. You dare tell your senpai to shut up? Drop him, give me 20 million! <laughs> the amount of swearing always increases nominally whenever someone stands around stepper. Stop prolonging your syllables, Japan. <laughs> Yo, rascal! <laughs> what the hell is wrong with Stepper? Now draw, varmint! Yo, it was a transform and draw match. Who says that? I'm unstable! <laughs> I held my breath and now I can't have scissors! Uh, it's either Nostalgia Critic or Rift Tracks. I steal jokes from either one of those. <laughs> Do you think Rampage is traumatized at all from being left alone in flames? <laughs> Suddenly, there was a moose approaching me from the light. A moose with very oddly shaded eyes. <laughs> I agree. Have you never been trained by anyone ever? Have the Cybertrons just been like tolerating you hanging around? You see when people talk about how much homoeroticism there is in Transformers? Stuff like this is what they're talking about. Okay, sorry folks, we had a minor technical problem, but I think I've solved it, hopefully? So, what are we talking about? Uh, you want Silver Bolt to hold you in his manly arms and ascend to the stars together in the heat of rapture? That's cool. Yeah, well, you are part of a war. It happens. War gets bad enough to found whole new philosophical uh, movements that pretentious people in undergrad think that they know a lot about, but like don't actually. A body of liquid? You wish Cybertron had such wonders! Look at that shit! Why? He's an asshole! And he didn't even save your life! In fact, he could have cracked your skull the way he saved you! You're kind of stuck with yourself for the rest of your life. Sorry. Sometimes people die in a fire and it's all your fault, Stepper! Sometimes life sucks! Silverbolt never tries to change himself to accommodate anyone else. He's basically sworn off all of social interaction. We used to sit by the lake, Hot Rod! I can't believe you replaced me just because you think I'm dead. And you were asked to by a superior officer. So, in a freaking unbelievable coincidence, Nintendo 64 happens to release a game that stars transforming robots at the same time the kids are actually hanging out with transforming robots. It's kind of like in Sailor Moon when 
when um, the girl like sees a poster for a magical girl show where characters look just like she and her friends look when they're in uniform. It's like, what? I, I don't get it. Mm. Nice edgy interior, Mr. Red and Black. Ah, people always think Red and Black is edgy. That blue hedgehog again, of all places! <laughs> How many times has Hot Rod been run off the road? He's just like, oh, there's an angry car bearing down on us. It's fine. So sometimes Rampage has a tiny Decepticon symbol under his Autobot symbol, and sometimes the animators said, nah, and just kind of forgot it. <laughs> oh, Rampage! Hi! It's so great to see you. It feels like it's been so long. When was the last time we saw each other? Oh. Oh. Stop saying you rascal. It's not particularly threatening. Or any degree of threatening at all. The art's gotten better since the first, since uh, before, hasn't it, folks? Like that earlier shot where Hot Rod is like, look at this beautiful view. That shot, that moment would not have worked if the animation had been the same as it was before. <laughs> Hot Rod, you have no reaction at all to seeing the scratch through symbol. So I should probably mention at this point that Rampage's backstory was actually reused for Shattered Glass. For a character named Sideswipe, no less. And he actually has the same model as Rampage. Even though that property is mostly based off G1. It's a little confusing. <laughs> but yeah, he was formerly an Autobot. He was abandoned by the Autobots, so he became a Decepticon. And even has the symbol slash throw that he still wears as a sign of who he used to be and how much he's changed. Except in Shattered Glass, the Autobots are actually the bad guys. So it's good that the Decepticons picked him up. I mean, it is good the Decepticons picked him up here since, um, you know, <laughs> Rampage would have died otherwise, but like... <laughs> <laughs> I wish to have shoulders as square as yours someday. We'll be best friends, won't we? Forever and ever. Her, her, her. <laughs> Until I left him to burn. Ooh, I don't remember that shot from the English version. <laughs> so, Rampage has abandonment issues, anger issues, PTSD, which Hot Rod also has. Didn't you ever watch those emergency preparedness videos of elementary school? You're not supposed to go back into a burning building! I care very much about what McGruff the Crime Dog teaches me! Or Smokey the Bear. <laughs> Why are kids always being taught safety by animals? Is... Is Stepper trying to make Rascal like his catchphrase? Like his word that he always says? Oh, Stepper. You poor baby. Car fight! Oh. Okay. Rampage used double team. Rampage's evasiveness rose. Uh, Stepper hurt himself in his confusion. How many other Pokemon jokes can I shoehorn in here? So, uh, this is riveting at all, but hurry up and knock him over. I mean, I'm starting to drag. Ooh! <laughs> Lost the mirror. <laughs> Zooming the cell! Good job, guys. That saved us 20 bucks. Or however much it saved them. I really don't understand what I did! Whee! I can see my house from here! <laughs> Look, I'm Double D! I'm flying! <laughs> Boy, they don't make safety rails like they used to. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, Rampage, I see you still sound like you need to cough into a napkin. Oh, thank God! Now my survivor's guilt will finally be cured! No. no. I see you have a new paint job. You look good. That white was really not your color, honey. It, it wasn't working. After Labor Day? Ew. Oh. He drops to one knee with his hand on the ground. I think that's a significant posture in Japanese, like, feudalistic society. Like, that means something. I don't know exactly what. I think it's like extreme reverence or something. I gotta say, <laughs> turning down his apology is a serious breach in etiquette, Rampage. Your symbol is so small and sometimes not there that I couldn't tell! <laughs> Forget about the past, even though I hunted you down across the galaxy just so I could kick your ass, and if the first thing I did was try to kill your friend and blame you for what happened to me. We should forget about the past! And then, in a very strange plot point, Negatron actually rescues Rampage. I have no idea why. Like, is this something Megatron does often? Pull Autobots out of burning buildings? Is this a recruitment method? Did he pity him? Did he offer him an ultimatum? Or did Rampage join with him totally voluntarily? He seems to think he could trust Destrons more than he could trust Cybertrons. Let's forget about the past. No, I'll have my revenge! See you next week, kids. Yeah, that's how the first part ends. Hot Rod gets ganked <laughs> by the friend that he abandoned the fire. You see why this is the point where our Micron Legend starts getting really good? Where the series starts getting serialized and they start getting like really deep shit. Like before we've had episodes that were better than other episodes, like that moved the plot along or had more exciting moments. But this is where it starts to get dark. And what people really like about Armada is that it gets dark. Um, so, yeah, we have Survivor's Guilt, we have a uh, former best friend who was turned by a traumatizing experience into an enemy, um, we have signs that the Destrons themselves might not be, like, this might not be black and white morality like you've been thought, like you thought, since Megatron saved a guy's life, seemingly not expecting anything in return, though he did receive something in return, and like, yeah, that, that's a side of Megatron that we don't see, that haven't seen before, and we don't really see afterward. I don't recall Megatron, like, Megatron sometimes behaves rationally or sensibly after this, but never to the point of saving a Cybertron's life just because they need help. Like, that's, that's weird for him. Um, so, as I said before, Rampage and Stepper are the last two characters to be introduced on either team. Um, after this, we pretty much have a complete team on both sides, uh, for the rest of the series. Which is fine, because we're past the halfway point, so this is a good time to, like, just work to develop with the characters we have now. Starting, of course, with Hot Rod. Um, since we haven't really seen- this is a side of Hot Rod that we haven't seen before either, but unlike Megatron's, this will carry forward as we learn more about- uh, as Hot Rod, like, faces more anguish, and actually, I think Hot Rod is an angstier character than Starscream in this show. And I know what the implications of that are, but I truly believe that's true. Like, Hot Rod has issues. Mm -hmm. God, the art in this episode is so pretty. So, uh, past origins, next time. This is Dragon Keeper 19600, signing off.